What is happening, everybody? You left wow. your volume up. I did leave my volume <laughs> up. <laughs> Hang on just a second. I'm going to fix that. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Tim B., I should have known you'd be the first one in here. What's happening, y'all? Uh, so, um, d just a uh, fair warning. Oh, we're not live yet here. We'll figure that one out, too. We, we got to go live on Instagram, too. Oh, Unfortunately, with Instagram, we... Oh, yeah, there's a notification. Well, he's doing that. Live. Tim B., welcome. Roy, how you doing today? Grom, it's good seeing you there, bud. So, we're going to go live on all platforms. Pray for us. Yep. I have all the technology in the world on my side. Half of it's not working, so if I don't catch your uh, comments and things, call it back out. I'd appreciate it. So, we are live on our normal cameras. Um, on YouTube and Facebook, we are live right here on Instagram. We like to do it all at the same time. But currently, there is We're no. Uh, we don't have access to a software program that will let us go live on all platforms from the one set of cameras. So, it's, it's kind of difficult how we have to do it. Mike, but there you are. This is kind of one of those things. We're kind of winging it today. Um, we're going to do a knife show for you live because we wanted to do some live interaction with you guys. We wanted to answer some questions. First and foremost is going to be new news and events coming up. And do you know what month it is, Greg? I don't know what day of the week it is. <laughs> Let alone a month. It's August. About? It's August. And what that Ooh, means. My wife's birthday is this month. I better know this. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. By the way, what I'm that means be here on the is. Okay, that's fine, as long as you're here on the 24th. So, mm. August 24th, National Knife Day, NKD. Coming up, <gasps> we've got a it's ton the of giveaways. Magical time so of the year. Last count I got, um, we were somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, several thousand dollars worth of giveaways for National Knife Day, and that number keeps climbing. Um, so we're, we're getting ready for National Knife Day. Super excited. Also, um, in events that we've got coming up on the 20th, um, that's going to be a Saturday. I know what's going on. Catching Deers is going to be here with Rut Daniels. So Rut Daniels is going to be in store. So if you're in town, if you're around this area, come by. You're definitely not going to want to miss it. You get to meet Rut Daniels. I believe that event's going on from 4 to 7 p.m. 4 to 7. We've actually extended our store um, hours for that night. So 4 to 7 p.m. Catching Deers and Rut Daniels is going to have a nice booth set up, doing a meet and greet. Um, they're going to have some really cool events going on here that day, so we're really super stoked about that. So if you're around here, definitely come by and check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so Towns Tools, uh, you've not saw this already. We are live right now. Yeah, yeah, you, you haven't seen this already. I promise you. Um, wait, okay. wait, wait. I saw one from West Knox. Yeah, let's head there in West Knox. You read that one, I'll read this one. I'm just in West Knox. I have a CRKT provoked with Vest Races. Nice. I like the Vests. Jason it's Brown's in, in, in YouTube in with us. Jason, it's good to see you feeling better. And it's in a locked position. Can you help? Um that might be a warranty issue that you would need to contact yes. CRKT on, um, especially if it's in a locked position. Joey Be very, Wyatt, very Garcia. careful. If uh, you haven't been guys. able to get that one unlocked, uh, definitely contact CRKT on um, those. Uh, Cricket knives are very good about their warranties. On, on their warranty uh, and uh, get that checked out because um, they will definitely be, uh, be good about getting that taken care of for you. Um, so we're really excited. We've got a great knife show for you. Uh, the actual knife of the day today, we're going to have two of them. Um, we're going to get to both of them in just a minute, but the, the knife of the day today, the one that just released, was this yesterday? The uh, second? That released about an hour and four minutes ago. Boker, Quaken, Auto, Out the Front, Blackout, D2 Blade Steel. Yeah. Oh, this works much better. I think better. it's really cool. Oh, Aluminum works. handles. Very lightweight. Um, we're going to show that one up close real quick. So... You don't need to see that super, yet. No. <laughs> super lightweight, um, nice and smooth. It is a uh, out the front auto with a thumb slide. Um, really nice pop to it. Is a Lucas Burnley design right there. Um, and what's the price on that one, Greg? I've got it right here, I think. I'm gonna pull but, it. But um, it's 104.25. You are correct, sir. 104.25 on that one. D2 blade steel. That's a great deal for a nice out the front automatic right there. 3.19 um, inches. 
Uh, 3.46 ounces all the way around. Yeah. And, I mean, very lightweight, very tough. That D2 is great on there. Yeah. Let's see. KC's in here. What are you doing, KC? And he's still got his uh, Kickstarter going on right now for his knives, opinion. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, folks, you need to check that out. That's a really cool knife and a really great value. Oh, you push the buttons. I, oh. Oh, it's not. Yeah. Because I didn't, I didn't keep us live. Nope. Um, there we go. There we go. And Georgia Bushcraft, I saw them in there as well. I look like a giant. They're saying they closer. can't hear us. No audio. I oh. Don't, that's mm. weird. Bring the phone closer to us? Uh, we can't really do that. Because um, then it's going to be like all in the camera shot. Mm. Instagram, tell us in the comments. Can you hear us talking? Let us know if we've got any audio issues. Okay, they hear us. Okay. They have audio. Okay. Um, sweet, awesome. Thank you, well, that's good. That Thank works. you. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so this is that knife show twenty six. Thank you. And Jim. um, I think we've got the numbers. I worked messed out. up one time. I went to public school. Well, you know what? And I'll tell you guys this. So we messed up. What was it? Episode twenty four. Uh, and yes. uh, we thought it was twenty three. Yes. Well, then for the last n two knife shows, we've recorded them. And then I've gone to upload the footage in the computer, and I've had one file name in one place as one number, and then another file name in another place as another number, because I realized my mistake. So it's been an ongoing thing, but now we're back on track. This is episode 26. We've got a lot of really cool knives. We've got a lot of brand new knives, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that we've had for a little while, but really haven't talked about. Um, so we're going to get right into it here. Um, some of the new knives uh, that have just been released in the last week, one really cool one is this uh, Boker USB Auto in uh, carbon fiber and M390. Carbon fiber and M390. This one just released last week. Let's take a look at that one up close right there. So we're going to show it first on Facebook and YouTube right here up close. I won't let them forget about you, IG. So carbon fiber on the handle material m390 on the blade steel so the original usb comes with d2 and it's aluminum handles this one's got carbon fiber all blacked out black stone wash on the blade finish and m390 that's a california legal auto right there a great little keychain auto i think i think that would be uh that would be really, I really nice i think an auto is underrated in an everyday carry and one that's that oh, small especially you can have in your yeah. fifth pocket now i'm going to show this one uh, show it on IG. ig right there so that's going to be a really, really nice. Uh, IG doesn't get to show these things uh, in videos. Uh, pop the uh, pop the knife for him. Show him how nice it works. Yeah. There you go. That's so satisfying. Such a great click right there. And that one's coming in uh -oh. at 114. Uh-oh. 114. Uh -oh. What? We have Isaac Ward in the comments. Oh. And Isaac said he'll take two of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we got him waiting on you, buddy. Absolutely. Um so this one is a fantastic deal at 114 with M390 on the blade steel, um, carbon fiber on the handle material, super lightweight, really feels good in the hand. Oh, um, I do like that. So they were giving you hearts. really, really digging that one. Um, another new one, and I wanted to talk about this. I grabbed this um, uh, this morning because one thing we haven't talked about lately is um, Gerber a lot. And some of the products that they're coming out with and some of the more high-end products that they're coming out with. So they've got, um, and they're doing a really good job with the quality on these. I'm here to tell you. Uh, I looked at a couple this morning, one with 20 CV blade steel. Um, I looked at some with S30V, and I'm talking super thick blade stock on some fixed blades, some good bushcrafting knives. And um, this is one of them. Now, um, this one, and I'll be honest with you. Big I Mike, that, the Boker would be nice. The Jive, I'd, li I'd like that. I don't even remember the name of this one right here. I got a box. Hang on. Um, you got the box? I got the box. What's in the box? Um, it is the Sedulo, S-E-D-U-S-O. Sedulo right there. Um, it's going to be an Axis style lock, Ambi thumb studs, um, Ambi pocket clip, tip up pocket clip. And flips out really nice. S30V on the blade steel. And uh, I don't even think we have this one online yet. No, that one just came um, in today. It literally just came in today. And I wanted to show off, um, and this it's made in the USA. And Which I really it? wanted to show off uh, some of the new stuff that uh, Gerber's got going on. Because they've got some really cool new designs with really premium materials. 
Um, and they're coming in uh, at a good price point. Now, I, premium materials is going to drive the price up. I want to say this one's around one ninety nine. Um, no, this one's one twenty five. No, on their website. On their website, not ours. Um, so I but don't know what we've got it for. Um, for dis- the discerning knife user, there is no substitute for American-made craftsmanship. The Sedulo speaks their language for superior cutting performance and premium materials and an eye-catching EDC package. So, um, and it comes in, uh, I think, four different colors. Yep. Um, S30Z, so pivot lock mechanism. Let's take a look at that one up close right here. He took my box. It's got a lanyard hole. Lanyard hole is uh, at an angle right there. So the lanyard hole is going to be really easy to use at an angle back there in the back end. Um, and just a, a really good EDC design. I think it's a really solid design. Feels good in the hand. It's got a good width to it. It reminds me a lot of um, a Griptilian. Mm-hmm. That's that's actually what it reminds me of as far as feel in the hand and uh, materials and that kind of thing. Uh, that's what it really reminds me of. And I think Gerber is doing a great job. Um, you know, you typically think of a lot of the Gerber stuff as being more budget-minded. More but more entry-level. Yeah, but they're really doing a great job. Before, you know, they still had their high-end autos that they, mm-hmm. that they had with mm-hmm. premium materials. But now they're doing um, more manual EDC-type stuff um, with uh, premium materials right there. Mm-hmm. We're going to show that one show up that close. One. Wood monkeys IG. in there. I got a hat on. And I uh, want to give a shout out to Woods Monkey. Uh, really digging their stuff. Uh, we had some of their folks in the store I had, uh, yesterday. Uh, I had Dave and Rich, Ed and Ed and Keith. I believe all stopped by. They were awesome. They brought me barbecue sauce. Yes. I got. I am super excited to try <laughs> that barbecue sauce. Um, uh, unfortunately, I was not here yesterday. Uh, so Being and lazy laying out. And I no, I was actually. Um, out in the heat, but uh, I actually made ribs last night, and coming in finding that barbecue sauce, I was like, man, I could have used this last night. Well, I was nice to you. I even gave you the spicy. That's perfect. I know. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I know. Um, so moving right along, we've got several knives to get to um, and oh, several Jason, knives to Jason feature. Jason Brown brings up something good. Uh, didn't Gerber make the Sedulo? He thinks he spelled it wrong. You might be, I don't know, it's on a box. As a custom limited thing last year, a year, year and a half ago. Yes. Yes, they did. Ah. Um, but now they're doing an EDC version of that. Good question on that one, Jason Brown. Good catch, Jason. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, now, we've had a lot of uh, Omni launches from Benchmade. We've got them all right mm-hmm. here that we want to go over. Um, starting with uh, last week, we released this one. Or no, no, no. No. Last week, we one. released this one. Yes. It's the uh, Meat Crafter. And this is the next version of the Meat Crafter. Lightweight is all good. So. Out. Um, let's let's take a look at that one up close right there. Now, this is the Meat Crafter. This is with G10 handles instead of the carbon fiber. Um, I really dig the the rivets in the um, in the handle right there. This one's coming in with S45 VN on the blade steel, nice and slicey right there, super sharp right out of the box. Mm-hmm. Um, CPM S45 VN blade steel, um, and let's take a look at that. Look at that. I think this would make, I mean, it's going to be a great meat knife in general, but I think it would make a great fillet knife too. Oh, I, um, oh yeah. So really, really digging that thing. And uh, I got it I got it a little dirty right there. Whoops. We'll flip it around and then show IG. And then we're going to show it to IG right yep, there. Push the button. That, uh, that meat crafter is really cool. It's now, almost like we've done this before. I will say. Flip um, flight, you're right. We did try to go live for a second. We ended up having yeah. technical difficulties. It, I'm the technical difficulty. So, <laughs> so um, this one right here, uh, it's interesting. Uh, and we talked to some customers and uh, we talked to some of our sales associates um, talking about the original meat crafter with the carbon fiber handles. And some customers had some issues with it, um, didn't like how slippery it was, especially when wet, because a lot of people are going to be using this um, as a fillet knife, uh, like for when you go fishing and stuff like that, cleaning fish, that kind of thing. And so the handles are naturally going to get wet, and the carbon fiber can tend to be a little slick. The G10 is going to have a little bit more grip to it. Uh, Also, this one's coming in um, at a lower price point, if I'm not mistaken. That one's going to be 270. So 270 for that meat crafter right there. Um, And that's going to be, no, that's wrong. That is wrong. 180, excuse me, 180. There we go. That's better. 
No, that's not right either. TC in numbers, it's 270. Is it 270? It, it, it is right 270. 270. Okay, I had it right to begin with. Uh, 6.8 in, inches on the blade length right there. I thought I had it right to begin with, but I wasn't sure. I second guessed myself. I should never do that. Um, Kydex on the sheath right there, uh, and it fits in really nice. I like how they've done the Y on that, so it makes it really easy. When you push your thumb, and I want to show this up close. Um, so I know it was a Bon Jovi song, Jason. I don't remember if it was in full album or not. Release this. Um, it's super simple. A lot of times you'll get Kydex sheaths that are a little bit too tight. What they've done to fix that, and uh, I don't know if a lot of people realize this, but when you push your thumb up in here, it actually separates that Kydex just slightly and makes it easier to pull out. That way, and I've done this numerous times, I've cut myself. Yeah, how, how uh, grabbing right was the last here. Time you did that? Or something like that because uh, a knife won't come out of the sheath. Um, so this makes it a lot safer. All you do is push, yep. it separates the Kydex, and it comes out, but it still stays very, and I'll show this. Uh, yep. Just a, mount, just a mountain dude just said. <laughs> I didn't put it in there good. I didn't put it in there good. There we go. There we go. That's what she said. <laughs> wow. Using your own jokes against me. Okay. Anyways, so there we go. Yeah. So, won't come out. Um, but yeah, I. <sighs> Speaking of which, I'm not afraid to make a fool out of how myself. Am I, how am I going to explain this? On you know, when my kids ask me, "What do you do at work, Daddy?" This. Watching TC do this. God help us all. All right. Um. So <laughs> next up. Thirsty um, Nifty, what's going on, brother? We've got another Benchmade Omni launch that just launched uh, a couple of days ago. Um, and that's going to be the drinking game for the flyway. day. Take a drink every time he says launch. And I really dig this flyway. So this is going to be a bird and trout knife. Um, same kind of uh, Kydex sheath right there with the same Y in it. Um, got the belt clip or the belt loops made into the Kydex right there. You can also attach any sort of belt clip if you want to. If you want like an ulti clip or one of the universal belt clips, um, those will also attach to the rivets in this um, or the, the eyelets. Uh, but this is going to be a really cool bird and trout knife right there. And uh, I'm really digging all the bird and trout knives that are coming out. I mean, I like a good small knife. We've had I, a I bunch of them come out yeah. from like Smith & Sons. Smith & Sons got some. Um, We've even got a small marbles version if you're yeah. looking for a budget version. Uh, I know KC likes a bigger knife, but for a small, around, fishing, very lightweight bird and trout knife, yeah. that is a perfect one. That bright orange color, you know me, I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to lose it. I'm, It's going to get lost in the honeysuckle of the weeds somewhere. Hey, Bally Jack's with us. How you doing, man? What's happening, Bally Jack? Thank you for joining us. I do not have any butterfly knives up here today. Um, So th this one I'm really digging. This one's coming in at... Hang 180. On. Are you sure? Yep. Positive? Yep. Because, I mean, you had to count five the other day, and you got 100%. seven. 180 dollars on this one. Ah, he's right. CPM 154 on the blade steel, and uh, it is a full tang fixed blade, orange G10 handles. This one in particular is a first production run, and it has first production stamped right there on the blade. We got a question from IG there. Can you attach it all together with either one? So... They're asking, can you attach the sheaths together? Um, you know, I don't see any issue with that. Uh, you would have to do uh, some finagling, um, but I don't see where that would be a problem. You could, uh, you could definitely get some paracord and uh, lash those two together right there, and I don't think that would be a problem at all. Um, I don't think that would be an issue. I think that would be a, a cool little combination right there, um, but I don't know. Maybe you should buy both of them and try that out. I think that's a good idea, right? Yes. If somebody does it, send us <laughs> pictures. <laughs> but, um, no, I think that's, that's actually a really good idea and, and, and good point on that one. Uh, I'm now going to show that one up close on IG right there. Well, when you show it to so, IG, look, YouTube gets an update as well. Yeah. It's all pretty. It's like you planned this out. You did. I did not. No, hmm. no, I didn't. I didn't at all. Um, but really dig this one. Uh, one thing that's understated about JB, these bird and trout JB's knives. Here. What's up, JB? Big Red EDC. And uh, one thing that's really cool about these bird and trout knives, I love that they put the jimping far out on the, the front of that blade right there, making it really easy to get your index finger on there and use it more like when you're, when you're cleaning game 
more like a scalpel. You get a lot more precision with your cuts. As uh, someone that catches small fish regularly, even no matter what I'm fishing for, for cleaning bluegill, cleaning small channel cats, brim, little brim, yeah. uh, yellow bellies, blue belly cats, all the small stuff, that right there is a great one for doing fillets. Absolutely. And uh, dove hunting, uh, dove, se- dove season should be coming up very yes, soon. Yes, yes. So uh, I think that's a that's a great great knife right there. Um, moving right along, we've got a brand new Rough Rider Triple R. R R R R R R O one eight mateys. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to be the kayak pattern. This one's a little bit different though. This one's with green stabilized oak. And taking a look at a couple of different ones of these, each of them are very unique and individualistic to one another. So a lot of people remember the kayak. I don't remember which triple R it was. It was in. It was earlier in the series. It was like two or three, mm-hmm. somewhere in there. Hey, ISG's here. What's going on, Island Style? And um, we're going to show that one up close. This is going to be that same kayak pattern with the Warren Cliff and uh, the, um, I call it a reverse Tonto, but... Sheep's foot, war sheep, war sheep, foot toe, um, but D two tool steel on the blade, and it's going to have that uh, stabilized green oak, and I think that's beautiful. I think I think that wood, that stabilized wood, is absolutely gorgeous on that knife right there. Coming in at fifty nine ninety nine. Um, She's yeah. a little chunky thing. I mean, chunkier than than cold peanut butter, and very nice looking. I like <laughs> it. Nickel silver on the pins and on that uh, on that. Arrowhead shield right there, and got a really nice, nice pop to it right there. Are you really going to show them that. first, or are you going to do it in the microphone first? Because um, I know you're going to do it in the mic. I'm going to do it in the mic. So, button. <laughs> that sounds so nice. It does. It now, does. We'll show them. So I get, I'm going to get the blades out first. So that's a that's a beautiful, beautiful knife right there, and uh, really, the really there we go, that. Thrifty. That's not a bad idea. What's that? A foot cliff? Foot cliff. <laughs> I like that thrifty canippy. <laughs> the foot cliff blade. Mm-hmm. Um, so that one's coming in at fifty nine ninety nine D2 on the blade steel. That one's up on our website. Lifetime Rough Rider guarantee on all of those as well. I'm trying to remember what knives I had for my picks because I got them all mixed uh, up here. This one, this one, one this one. one. Yeah. Okay. I want to set those off to the yeah, side. This, this is me. I don't want to. No, and we've done this. We've done this. Now we've done this. Did we talk about that? Uh-uh. We talked about this. Mm-hmm. And we talked about this one. And we talked about this one. So, and we're we've got these two left. In 20 minutes, our picks. Guys, we need questions. Who has stuff? We, 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 and yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Who needs stability? <laughs> Did I tell you? Uh, I let me tell you something, Casey. I need all the stability I can get because uh, it's uh, it's been crazy. Did it's I tell you I crazy. found out that I'm colorblind? Colorblind. Yeah, it came out of the purple. So I've got a friend of mine. Speaking of colorblind, um, he is from Southern Ohio. I'm sorry. And he has an interesting accent. The way he puts it, uh, the Southern accent just kind of comes across the river there Mm -hmm. um, from Kentucky. So it's a really weird mixture of an accent. He says colorblind. As many T-shirts as I wear nowadays, I'm colorblind as well. <laughs> I, ISG, no, you get no more chicks. And even if you pick up that knife, you get no more chicks. You have too many. I've seen your post. <laughs> uh, never mind. I'm not going to make there. that comment. Nope. This is being recorded <laughs> everywhere. Anything you say, Kim, will be used held against you. So um, we've got a new Beyond EDC knife, and I just saw it uh today you showed that one off so to me today it is very nice this one is really cool so this oh, is a we got a question from timby uh fixie folks which lt right would you all go for for three inch blade the next gen or the gp medium hunting fishing carry maybe an edc some days and uh lunch prep for the packages Ooh, that's an interesting question i like the bandit i mean it's not one of its choices there but that's the one i like yeah yeah, the Bandit's a really good one. Um, I really dig that one. Um, I also dig the next gen. Uh, I'm a big Genesis fan. Um, I love my Genesis personally. Uh, he does. He pets it every night. He reads stories, too. With the uh, Scandi grind. Love that thing. Um, so, But 
uh, we've got this new Beyond EDC, Dirk Pinkerton designed, um, and it is. I, I I tell you what, Wood Monkey says Bandit. There you go. The Bandit's a great one. It really is. Mm-hmm. This one right here, and I don't think it's talked about enough. Um, but and tell me in the comments. Let me know uh, what you guys think. But I'm going to show this up close. I really dig when blades have this really sharp milled out portion right here um, that you can use as a thumb or as a reverse flick opening. I really like that. When it's got that um, that hard edge milled out of the blade right there, it's not all the way through, so it's not a hole. Um, but I actually prefer that to thumb studs. And... It's not really talked about that often. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it very much. Um, but I actually prefer that. It feels more fidgety to me, and I don't know why. Well, with that with that fuller, that blood groove, like you like to call it, you're sitting there, and you're reverse flicking it with every finger. You sit over at your desk and try to learn how to do it with your pinky. I think part of me actually, it, it, it harkens back to... Show down. Um, it harkens back to the long pulls that I love so much on traditional knives. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really, really dig that, uh, that milled out portion of the blade and using that as the opening right there. And it's, I mean, it's super flicky. Uh, they're calling this a talon blade. It's, it's kind of like a, uh, understated hawk bill. Um, this one's coming in with, mm, what's that blade steel? VG10. VG10 on the blade and steel. The, the That's price you were telling me that earlier is amazing. It is price on that one is sixty two bucks. Mm-hmm. VG ten blade steel, uh, micarta on the handles, uh, reversible pocket clip, tip up pocket clip, liner lock, um, super smooth and super slick action right there. I mean, you saw it fall shut right there. <laughs> Jason Brown says it looks like a good carpet knife. You know, Jason, you are not wrong about that. Um, I can tell you right now, and and actually, my mom is ripping up. Par- carpet right now um because uh in the 90s they covered up uh sg you are right vg10 is underrated they covered up really nice hardwood floors with carpet um but that was the thing to do back in the 90s yeah berber carpet yeah so my mom's actually ripping up carpet i'm sure she would love to have this right now because that would be a that's a good point if jason you were brown a good that's son, a you would just go ahead and send it to her she's going to be done with it by the time it gets there it's the thought that counts I almost said something I, I shouldn't have said. Um, anyways, uh, next up, we've got the next release for Benchmade, the next Omni launch release, which will be tomorrow. So and you all get to see this first. I'm really digging this. This is one of my favorite releases from Benchmade this year. I Guys, dig it. All the buyers are actually looking for it. They don't know where it's at. TC's had it hidden on his desk. Yeah. Left it there over the weekend. They have no idea where this thing is. Um, but I am really digging this. So they released a while back the full-size bug-out version of this. Mm-hmm. Carbon fiber handles, blue anodized thumb studs, and backspacer, and S90V on the blade steel. Yes, S90V on the blade steel. Um, so price on that, one? that, I mean, and... I tell you what, I love the mini bug out. I love the bug out itself, um, especially like our exclusive with the G10 handles upgraded. Um, but this one with the carbon fiber is just super slick, super fidgety. Love the axis lock. Um, very durable. Got the integrated uh, pocket loop right there. Uh, lanyard loop, pocket loop, really? Pocket loop, I like it. Lanyard loop. Pocket um, loop. We're going to show this one that up close. pocket loop for everybody. So and that that carbon fiber just glimmers so nice. Oh, look at that! Beautiful right there. Deep carry pocket clip is reversible. Pops out really nice. Right ISG there. wants to know: Is that a mini? That is a mini. That is a mini bug out. S ninety V on the blade steel. This one is being released tomorrow. And do we have a price on that one, Greg? Nope, I can't find it anywhere. Hang on. Looking, 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 looking. I'm doing too many things at once. I want to say it's two something, two seventy, two seventy. Um, 
And with that thumb stud placed where it's at, it's really easy to reverse flick those as well. I really dig this knife. This one is super slick. But I'm not going to be able to get it. Oh, why not? But, um, well, I just bought a house, and I just got married. So we're going to show that one up close to uh, IG? IG right there. That one's coming at 270. I was right. Again. Ugh, Again. Right. So um, really cool knife. Really nice EDC uh, with that mini bug out. And I think the mini bug out is a perfect size for an unobtrusive EDC, especially one that's beefed up like this with the uh, carbon fiber on the scales. Uh, I think that's a that's a that's a really cool knife right there, and really, really good EDC, and it's going to be super durable. I am going to say this though, with S ninety V on the blade steel, if you're sharpening this yourself, you better have some patience, um, because you're going to have to put in some work. <laughs> Casey Spiron just let me know that he's got a four thousand subscriber giveaway coming soon. So, guys, if you're not subscribed to Knives Fast, go check out his channel. Get those numbers pumped up, then get entered for his giveaway. That's always a good thing. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Tim B, thank you for shouting. That. Tim B's got the prices on there for us. Look at him. He's helping out so good. Heck, yeah. Okay, let's see. Questions, comments, things like that. Before we get into our uh, our picks. Yes. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, Derek Phillips over on Facebook wants to know, when is ZT having more stocks sent in? So we've got tons of stuff on order guys we can't tell you an exact date on when knives are coming in because simply we don't know so yeah. check back yeah. all the time go to our uh, new arrival section or if there's a specific knife on the website that you want fill out the notify me section as mm -hmm. soon as it comes back into stock we uh you'll get an email and you'll be amongst the first to know also don't forget everything on the smkw site is also sezzle approved so you can yep. get that uh, taken care of and get four easy payments of anything over a hundred dollars so if you're sitting there waffling on the price, that's always a good thing to have around. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let me just flip through those pages. I bet you better believe it. Do we have any EDC cookeries? Cookeries coming out. Um, that's a good, good question. Also, and I don't know, I don't know for sure on that one, but that does lead me to my next thing. So you guys responded really well to the EDC with TC video. Um, of five EDC knives that will change how you look at EDC. JB, don't you, Jason Brown, don't you joke about that? They already did a Supreme bug out. I'm going to, um, I'm going to be continuing that series. We're going to be doing that series uh, a lot more regularly now. Uh, the next one that is going to be coming out will be on Saturday. That is going to be five outrageous EDC knives. <laughs> five outrageous EDC okay. knives. In TC and math, how many is that actually? It is five. It's five only? Did I have an honorable mention on that one? Mm -hmm. I don't think I did. I don't trust your counter anymore. Anyways, um, so five outrageous EDC knives. These are going to be five, and I because it's EDC, I made it folder knives. I, did, I am going to be doing a video on five best EDC fixed blades. I am going to be doing videos on five best uh, EDC hiking knives. And we're also going to be doing uh, not just knives, but EDC gear. Mm -hmm. So it's all going to be top five gear or knife videos uh, as it pertains to EDC. Um, so keep an eye out for those. Those are going to be really cool videos, and I'm really digging that. I'm really getting into Welcome that. Welcome in, Native Wild. Um, and really looking forward to continuing on with that series. We've got a question here from Quentin Bundy. And what is your preferred Vitronox? Preferred Victorinox for Vitronox. me? Um, you go first. My fun. favorite one overall is the Huntsman. Um, I like I like what it provides. I like all the stuff that it has. I keep a Huntsman in um, my uh, Triple Run Overland Gear bum bag, um, which I don't actually have. It's actually sitting on my desk right now. Um, you've got yours on you because <laughs> um, I have something in it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna get mine here in just a minute. But uh, when we get to what we're carrying later on, but. Um, I like the Huntsman, uh, and I like the Classic SD. Those are my two favorites. I can't come up with just one favorite Victorinox um, because I, I love so many of them. But I, I really like the does. Huntsman. I really love and the Classic the Farmer. SD. We got yeah. in. We got in some of our new exclusive farmers again, and uh, you'll see on these they actually don't say SMKW on them. That's in case you want to engrave them yourself in any way this time around. 
And uh, I really like the 580 because I love having yeah. a pair of fingernail clippers around. Yeah, that's a good point. I forgot something on there. It's in my Overland bag because this made me rethink about carrying stuff again. Yep. Ha <laughs> ha. It's not a knife, but the new K Bar uh, Sweet Shot. I like yep. that thing. And uh, it's the, what do they call that? Pearl, polypropylene mold injector? Yeah. Yeah, so really cool, like, slingshot right there. And I've gotten into uh, slingshot stuff again. You got yours from? Uh, I got mine from Best Damn EDC. Yep. Um, uh, actually, Exclusive is making it for him. And the guy's down in uh, Chattanooga and uh, did a phenomenal job. And I really dig that thing. Um, but I, I've been really getting into it. And I bought, like, a pack of 1,500 or 2,000. Um, ball bearings from Amazon. Um, oh, oh, please tell me they spilled out all over your kitchen. No, no, ah. they're actually they're actually in my gun room right now. So, uh, yeah, they're they. Do you know what you're doing? Do I ever know what I'm doing? No, they're they're in my gun room right now, sitting on top of my safe. No, with, with the bum bag, and I was taking a look at it. I'm going to start carrying this because I like the ones that I ordered some that are the uh, clay made. So whenever you yeah. shoot them in the wood, you lose them. Yep. You don't have to worry about anything. They're biodegradable. Uh, the kids are at that age. I can start showing them type of stuff like this. Yeah. And yeah. So And hopefully they're smarter than me and they don't shoot a cardinal and then their dad makes them eat it. It's a lot thing. <laughs> they taste terrible. A lot of people, a lot of people I, I feel like don't appreciate a slingshot for the survival tool that it, it is and can be. Um, I mean, that is a invaluable tool that um, people, uh, something of that nature, people have been using for centuries. Yes, Mike, um, you need a slingshot. So. Well, I mean, and then with K-Bar, having it in under 20 bucks, yeah, it's a great place. It's something to play around with. And if you get serious about it, there are higher grade ones yeah. you can go to. They're really fun. Um, and with the bum bag, like I said, it's something to be able to carry around. You have all your uh, ammo in it. It's really good. And let's see, Casey had an a, uh, example. Uh, five knives uh, for cutting yourself. <laughs> I I couldn't keep that list to five, Casey, because there's many more than that that have uh, that have actually uh, cut me uh, recently. Speaking of Casey, he says he needs a slingshot with a folding knife inside of it. Oh, for all those tree rats stealing my tomatoes, I fulfill I feel you on that one. Yes, yes. save the tomatoes for me. Especially if you live in a more urban environment, um, you can use that to dispatch, you know, varmints, varmints, squirrels, in-laws, uh, groundhogs. That's not where I was going with that. Oh, sorry. Wow. Uh, it's a good thing they don't watch this channel. Well, they never watch anything <laughs> with me. It's fine. And you got more of them than I did. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along. That one took him a second. Um, looked into slingshot laws in California, and no surprise, not legal. Slingshots are not legal in California? Really? Even if they're under two inches? Wow. What? I'm not even going to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, next we're getting into our picks. Okay, if you use our picks on that, is it going to break everything again? So, we're just going to sing? Hope, Faith, Greg, and TC, you guys better be good. No, absolutely not. Never. Us? No, no, no. Um, so we're getting into our picks. Ooh, best five knives for stabbing your keyboard. First up, oh, sorry. budget picks. Budget pick. All right, me or you first? You first. All right. I went with an OKC Ontario Wraith. These are the Ice Wraiths. They're very cool. They're a great everyday carry. They can I, be, I failed, failed at that completely. You failed. I failed at that one completely. We are still having some trouble with our uh, back end on the computers, guys. We do apologize about that. And they are still working on fixing that. Thank you guys for being so patient with us. These are a 2.6-inch uh, OS 8 stainless steel drop point lockback. Um, I went with the green this time, but we have a whole host of colors on these. So whether you like to carry a blue knife like KC or a red knife like JB, uh, all those, there's a ton of really great options. And for the price tag of $24.95, that's a good deal. You can't beat it. I, really I like failed it. again. Wow. I'm having a hard time getting on that thumb stud. But, um, yeah, I'm digging that. Reversible pocket clip. Mm -hmm. um, super simple and uh, very affordable, and I dig that. Be sure to show that. I dig that a lot. So I'm and the try this one more time. Try it one more. Yeah, I got it. I got it. First got time. It. Oh, don't do that ever again, please. 
but I love the colors on these. Um, you, there's so much you can do with these. These are a great uh, entrance into a outdoor knife that you can work yeah. on yourself, uh, make your own scales for, and those plastic scales of that color really pop. Uh, like I said, with all the different colors, there's even a smoke colored one uh, that's really cool. So yeah, it yeah. makes it something you can. Yes, I did say red, uh, big red, for twenty four ninety five. It's not there for the bargain bin, but it's still a good knife. So, what did you go with for your budget pick? My budget pick is going to be the Moranive Companion. Um, so, I love this one. Rob Nice says he's got the uh, smoke version of the Wraith. Nice. So, um, I think this is one of the uh, best budget-friendly EDC uh, fixed blades out mm -hmm. there. Um, and, and, I mean, budget-friendly fixed blades all, all around. Uh so let's take a look at that one right there, up close. Now, I love more knife in in general. You did. I think they're. Um, ah, you beat me on price. Yes, I did. This one's coming in at nineteen ninety nine. The more knife companion um, features a four inch stainless steel clip point blade. Um, and Satin finish. Yeah, this eight. one's this one's actually a mirrored that finish. That is a mirrored finish. Um, but uh, it's 8.625 inches overall mm -hmm. and weighs just 2.92 ounces. Mm -hmm. And comes Super, with a sheath. Yes. Um, military green is what they're calling that. Um, and love that uh, that Scandi grind right there. Um, I absolutely love a Scandi grind on a fixed blade knife. Uh, I think it's very underrated. Mm -hmm. um, it And what I like about that is... When it comes to sharpening, it makes things so much more simple because you've got one angle. You don't have a dual bevel. You've got one angle that you have to worry about. Um, now, as you use it, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. What you've got to make sure you do as you sharpen over time is keep that single bevel um, progressing as you sharpen it over time and not let it get... Um, wavy or, or unnatural and keep trying to go down and down and down on it. So uh, I'm going to show that one off to IG right there. Really love that one for uh, a great fi fixed blade coming in under 20 bucks, 19.99. And um, I mean, that's going to be one of the favorites from uh, Dutch Brush Craft Knives too. I mean, they've, they've really put those things through a intense torture test. And uh, I believe we did a Mora on our Will It Cut series uh, mm -hmm. over a year ago. And uh, the thing performed flawlessly. I mean, I it think was it's intense. Still at, I think it's still at your desk. Um, it's somewhere up in here. I, I keep one in my Blue and Overland uh, shoulder bag. I keep one in the car. I keep one in my wife's car. And I think I caught them all on sale. They were under 15 each. I've got five more knives yeah. laying around the house, and I've not spent $100. Mm -hmm. And all of them are still sharp as the day is long. And I think that's... Uh, What's you the blade still on the Mora? Let's see. Nope, wrong button. Double wrong button. Man, I've been hanging around TC too much. Doo, 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 doo. They do not say that. It's a made in Sweden. Hold on. Doo, doo. I think it's going to be Sandvik steel. I think you're correct. I think it's Sandvik. Yes. Yes, it's going to be Sandvik stain stainless. I don't know what the designation is, if it's like 14C28, somewhere in there, 12C or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, yes, it's going to be Sandvik steel. Um and you okay. you kind of hinted at it. You said you had like five of them. If you've got a family and you've got several kids mm -hmm. and you want to start teaching them about the outdoors, Mora is a great way to go. And not because you're not going to break the bank. You're and not going to break the knife. You're still going to get a really fantastic freaking knife um, that's really going to hold up well. Yeah, I joked him. What's that? At, well, he sees Mora knife. He just wants more of them. These are my people. My people. Wow. I love it. Oh, my gosh. All right. So, mid-range. Mid-range for under 100 I decided to go with an SE. And anytime you can pick up an SE for less than 100 bucks, yeah. it's a good day. And this one is not only an SE, it's an SE kit. So, for under 100 you get your SE Azula 2. I had your thought. And then. Yeah. I you get, got the green one. I yes. Get, I like this. And I like the big hole in the back end. Um, that's what I had on my Zancudo that I lost. Mm -hmm. A moment of silence for his lost Zancudo. You're going to get a copyright strike on us. Quit that. Um, but uh, 
I like that you can put like a carabiner on there. Mm -hmm. and just like clip it. You can you can have your sheath on this, clip a carabiner on there, and clip it to a belt loop, and Ooh, just carry it like that. Knives. That's a good one. I love carrying a. Uh, uh, like I don't want to say small because this is not small no. by today's standards, but it is a smaller fixed blade by KC standards. Um, and you can just clip that on your belt loop and mm -hmm. just yeah, well, I pull love it the right fact off. that you can take the handles off of it. You can go skeletonized on it. Yeah. you can put your own. Uh, you can paracord wrap paracord it. it. Now, in the kit itself, it does come with a little bit of paracord. That way, mm -hmm. you can either take it and have it to be worn, or you can have it as a neck knife. Yep. You can skeletonize it yourself. Go all the way around. You also get your whistle in there, which is, we all know TC how he is with a whistle. That's why I'm not taking it out of the bag. Nobody. Gimme, gimme, nope. gimme, gimme, gimme. Nobody needs TC germs. You also get your different kind of clips inside of it. And I really like this neat little ferro rod that they give you, this little magnesium stick and a yeah. ferro rod. You get your SE card, and on the back of it, it gives you uh, your basic information. It gives you how to uh, survive 24 hours, all that stuff. And that's something that's highly overlooked that they yeah. throw in everything. And then you get your... Uh, is that an spring steel clip? belt clip? No, spring that's not an ulti clip, but, um, clip, but yeah, it's it's a spring steel belt clip, and I really dig that. I actually um, still have mine. I ended up putting it on a different knife mm -hmm. because I carried my Zancudo with a different type of clip, mm -hmm. but I've still got my clip for my Zancudo uh, that I use on various other knives. Yeah, and that one there, the entire kit, Azula Two kit, comes in eighty five ninety five. That's amazing. And you get everything in it. You get their lifetime guarantee. No questions no asked. No questions asked warranty. So mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want to, basically. Now, they, I will say no questions asked. They do ask questions because they want to know how you break Yes, it. there is that. Um, only because they're interested. But Jason Brewer, this is the Azula 2, and we've got that as a kit. And once that, this goes live... After we get done with the live, all the links will be down in the back uh, end of everything, so we'll have it. The on. link yeah. should be the link should be in the description already hey, for this. Did one. you do that? <gasps> yes, I did. TC did something. Look at that. I d look, I do things. I, d I look. I'm Peter Dinklage from. Um, You're setting me up for a lot of short jokes here. Where do you want to go with this one? <laughs> from uh, Game of Thrones. Uh huh. I drink and I know things. Well, we'll agree to the drink part. Let's keep moving on. Um, let's see. Mid-range for me. Well, somebody was asking what the clip looks like. So I was going to let you show them the clip, but go ahead and get that out. So that's the spring spit clip. What? Spring what was that? Still clip. And I'm the one that doesn't drink. What the? <laughs> so that way you can attach it and be able to carry it either scout carry if you want to go all the way across to your belt loop or on there. It's really nice. And like I said, you take these things and – Show especially on IG. If you're on IG with a SE, they want you to do hashtag Beater SE. They've got some great ones on there. Yeah, you are correct. That would be a full size Peter Dinklage knife. Yes, <laughs> I actually had somebody at uh, that I work with at Stampede told me told me the other day. They were like, "You look like a full size version of Peter Dinklage." Oh, you ate that up. <laughs> For all you people that told him that he does a good John Wayne impersonation, I had to hear cowboy movies all day that day. Just saying. I just stepped off know. my horse. Let me tell you something, Pilgrim. This is why I do dad jokes. This is my way of getting even with him. <laughs> we get paid to do this. Oh, God. All right. Mid-range picks. Yes, uh, Quentin, it Mine. is the same as the SE4. Correct, yes. I believe for the clip yes yes same as the se4 zancudo all of those se3 um all of those are going to have the same clip clip what i want you to read that from thrifty canifty he makes plenty of regular appearances <laughs> thrifty canifty he makes more appearances than he should simply because of his dad jokes only because he knows <laughs> That he annoys me, and I let it go because I know you all enjoy that. <laughs> okay. Everyone, Dark. It's like everyone lives to annoy me. Yeah, it's very fun. <laughs> I don't have to pay any money to do it. It's a great hobby. Okay. <sighs> dark. Why do you spell dark D-A-R-K and not D-A-R-C? Because you can't see in the dark. What? Hey. Huh. What do you call a fish with no eyes? I saw a microbiologist today. Yeah? He was much bigger than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Moving right along okay, to now, my mid-range yeah, now pick. Now you're my mid-range picker. All right. Um, and oh, you went with Case. I did. I went with a case, and uh, I'm really digging this thing. This one's brand new, so it's actually not up on our website just yet. It will be in the next couple of days. Um, but I saw this one and immediately was blown away. Um, so this is going to be the case. I got to read the box here. Antique Bone Smooth Rust Lock. Tim's 552, how are you doing? So, antique bone smooth rust lock right there. And uh, I think this thing is absolutely beautiful. Got the bullet shield on it, case double X. Double X on the bolster, which I really dig. Um, and I think that's going to be my next um, collection foray. You I'm going to start collecting the ones with the double X on the, on the bolster right well, there. I didn't know whether you're going for the double X or the rust lock. Cause you have been talking about getting a rust lock. Yeah, for a minute. I have, I have. And, uh, this one's got the tested double X on the actual, um, I guess you would call that the fin, the wing, whatever that is, the, the thumb roll. Um, and I love the blade shape on this one. Look at that right there. That is just beautiful. I love this Don't thing. Don't forget to show IG. And um, this one's coming in at eighty eight ninety five. Um, it's not online. Ah, that's right. That's what they yep. did. It's not online yet. It is brand new. Um, just came in. So eighty eight ninety five. Uh, I know it's eighty eight something. Um, but really nine ninety five somewhere really right in digging there. that thing right there, and I'm really really wanting a rust lock. I don't have a rust lock. Hmm. I don't own a rust lock as of yet. Lacey Lace says uh, so if you're going to start collecting case knives, you should start collecting the tech uh, the tech X ones. <laughs> okay, it's a good suggestion. And I am a microbiologist. I'm not much bigger than you expected at five five. <laughs> See. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was my pick. I, I really dig that one. That one's brand new. It's going to be up on the website very, very, very soon. soon. All right, out of the, uh, do you prefer the Azula, or where did that question go? Or the Viper Barreras? Barreras? Barreras. Barreras. What? Barreras. Okay. Uh, they, they're asking, do you prefer the Viper, or the Mako 2, or the Azula 2? Um... I need to see the Viper because I, I I think I remember which one that is, but I want to make sure. Can you look it up real quick, Greg? Eh, probably on not. Your, <laughs> on your computer. Let's see. Results varied. It says uh, check back later. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 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 from uh, yeah from Vi yeah yeah Viper. Um. That's really tough. So it's a great knife for at one fifty-four, one sixty-five, somewhere in there, for, depending on which handle material you get on them. For price, I love the Azula, especially with the um, warranty. But that Viper is absolutely killer, especially with the br blade steel. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's coming in. ISG um, says Azula all day long. I, I love the blade steel on the Viper. Um, you to show that uh, case, uh, your mid-range pick again. Oh. Yeah. Oh. While he's getting that undone, Jason Brown shared one with us. Never challenge death to a pillow fight unless you are prepared for the repercussions. <laughs> Tim, I will be sharing that with my family tonight. And just so you know, they'll probably throw pillows at me for it. So thank you. Wow. Now, this is his mid-range pick. This is my mid-range pick. This is a uh, case antique smooth bone rust lock right there. Um, with the bullet shield, double X on the bolster, case double X on the uh, shield, and tested double X uh, on the opening right there. Really, really dig that knife. Um, and that's, that's definitely one of my favorites that I've found recently. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't, we, we featured one. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of open up uh, on this one. We featured one in a daily grind a couple of weeks ago. It was a, uh, case, um, bone stag, 6.5 bone stag, mm -hmm. uh, folding hunter. Um, and that one really got me that uh, there are certain knives since I lost my dad that, uh, 
that have really... If you make me cry, I'm hitting you. I'm just saying. That have really done it for me. And that was one of them because my dad carried a folding hunter. Um, it was an old timer. And that's what I always remembered him for. I thought it was absolutely obnoxious mm-hmm. that he carried a folding hunter. And uh, we were doing daily grinds that morning. Mm-hmm. And I picked this one up. And immediately my first thought was, and dad's been gone for uh, uh, right at six months now. And um, immediately when I picked it up, my first thought was, I should get this for dad for Christmas. You're going to think my dad's been gone and, for a uh, lot longer, and you're going to think that forever. And it's just it's a, a way it's, that it's, we're it's, connected to. Yeah. And always. so, you know, the bright side of it is I decided to go ahead and agree, buy it. Justin. I don't know who's chopping onions, but y'all quit. I decided to go ahead and buy it um, because I was like, well, it was going to end up in my collection anyways at some point. So if you all have ever wanted to see him hit, I went ahead and we have to realize you're turning into your dad. That's what this is. I know. And I'm not happy about that. (laughs) Um, But uh, and he would laugh at that. But um, yeah, I turned into my father years ago while he was still around. He made fun of me for it. He knew it was my wife knew what she was getting into. She looked at me. She looked at my dad and went, eh. (laughs) <laughs> but no, it was it was one of those things. It was actually a happy ending because I ended up buying the knife for myself, anyways. Uh, it was for him for Christmas, but I mean, I would I would have ended up with it at some point. Um, so I just I was like, you know what, might as well just go ahead and get it. I find it funny that you went for case for a mid range pick, and that one came in at what did you say, eighty seven, eighty eight, eighty eight, eighty eight. Yep. And I went with a case as well, but I went for case on the high end. And you beat me on the mid range, by the way, by three bucks. Three bucks, I beat you. Uh, we'll see how I do on the high end because I went for a case and we got some of the new abalone back in, which yep. I absolutely love. Talked to Alex downstairs. He said this was his favorite of them, so I'll let him pick my uh, one because I couldn't pick between one abalone and another. They were all beautiful. So, And because you picked an abalone, I my have to. Abalone he has, has a first name. name. It's it, C-A-S-E. Yeah, we'll go with that. We can spell that one. My abalone has a second <laughs> name. It's T E S T E D. I'm putting that on the record. <laughs> don't, don't hate me too much. I'm, no, I'm mad that I didn't think of it first. That's what I'm mad about. <laughs> but this is the case abalone, uh, abalone Smooth Trapper, the uh, CA12000. Uh, so it is absolutely gorgeous. And these just came in. We've got them in several patterns back on the website already. And at two forty ninety nine, this is a user. It is a collector. It is something beautiful to be added to that. And with uh, case now going to, uh, away from the CV, uh, they'll be m- moving to a lot more. Uh, what is it? Uh, carbon steel. Carbon steel. Mm-hmm. So I mean, this is excellent as well. What do the movies The Sixth Sense and Titanic have in common? I see dead people. I see the cold water thing. Cold drink. Thank you, Jason. Are you looking these up or are these off the top of your head? Because off the top of your head, I'm more impressed. <laughs> but ah. great case pattern. Move it back and forth. You can see that. Uh, that Watch that one. shimmer. It's I mean, beautiful. And so uh, a lot of people, and I, w- I want to make sure that everyone understands this. When it comes to abalone on um, traditional knife handles, uh, I can't impress. So... You notice that they're more expensive, and there's a reason for that. It's not only um, how difficult this material is to come Mm -hmm. by, but how difficult it is to work with. Imagine trying to put pins in this um, without it flaking away and without it breaking. It's a solid piece on both sides. It is incredibly difficult. God, I'm having a heart. It's incredibly difficult to actually drill through this and then put pins in this without it breaking apart. And um, that is why this stuff is so precious, and that is why these knives are so Mm -hmm. difficult to make right there. So that is an absolutely beautiful knife right there. Never be confused with case. They do not make anything that's just a show knife. That is still a carry knife. That's still a work knife. Um, and for me, that would be a Sunday go to meet and use it at church top knife and show and show off a little bit with it because yeah. there is some beautiful colors to this thing. And every time you look at it in the light, you get this outside in natural sunlight. That is going to shimmer and shine 
Um, Chain bait like a diamond. I mean, it's going to be like fat carbon all day long. And you know how much we love fat carbon around here. I mean, just something new to it every time you look at it. Yeah. Beautifully done. And we did not tell each other what we were picking for our picks today. So it's funny that we both went case. Yeah. Two totally different ones. All right. So what is your high end pick? Remember, I'm at 240. Where did you go? I think I won on price. <laughs> not by a ton. Not not. Uh, let's, let's, let me push the button here. Which one did you get? So I got the Microtech um, Ultratech DE, uh, and this is the Molon Labe Bronze Apocalyptic coating. Mm -hmm. um, it is a double edged right there, and yeah. uh, super sharp. We're gonna show that one up close. Yeah, right there. definitely show that one up close. Now these are always the steel can change in the metal yes. for these. This one is CTS two hundred four P, um, but they do use um, different kinds of steels occasionally on these uh, based on what they can get. It's always going to be a premium powdered blade steel. Um, Pastor Darren says that if if you hold the case up to your ear, you can hear the ocean. <laughs> can you go back to the specs on this one? I need. Oh I need, yeah, I can do that. I need the specs on this one. I can do that. There you go. Um, so, and I really dig the uh, apocalyptic bronze coated um, blade on this one. Uh, 6061 T6 aluminum handles uh, with that etched Spartan headgear Michael and uh, partial Molen Labe symbol. We're getting ready to be ending here, so you enjoy your lunch, but we'll go back over all the knives real quick before we end, as we always do. Yes. Um, also got the apocalyptic finish on the pocket clip right there, and of course, it has the birth date. Uh, on the pocket clip, as all of Microtech knives do. Uh, it's got the glass breaker on the back end. and uh, Don't stab me. Oh. Ah, there we go. Yeah, my battery's dying on my phone for IG. So we're going to show that one up close on IG right there. Yes. And uh, that's just a really cool knife. I, I like, I mean, I always dig the Molen Labe stuff. Um, always have. But uh, that Ultratech DE, I, I really dig that. That's uh, the only, well, one of the Microtechs that I have. Um, I was going to say the only one, but I've got two. Uh, mm -hmm. So one of them that I have is the Ultratech DE, and I really, really dig that. Um, really dig that dagger blade. And it, it's one knife that uh, I've never mm -hmm. had a failure uh, at and all. Price tag so. on that one for a Microtech is not bad at all. Three sixty six oh eight. I love Three sixty six. I thought it was going to be a lot higher than that when I, I first saw it. I love to throw the 08 on the end there. Yeah, like that. yeah. That's but, us. I mean, we have such a wide gamut on the table, not only for our picks, but for things that we've come out this with this week. And uh, for automatics, I mean, yeah. we've got three automatics on the table out the front. Starting at 104, ranging up to 366. Yeah. Um, so remember, knife collecting, knife carrying is not just a high end uh, hobby to have. So yeah. if you're looking to jump in, in there, and we get a lot of people that ask us, what should my first knife be? What should my first fixed blade be? All those type of things. So Tim's got a Nazula in his cart. Ha <laughs> ha. Nice. I want to see pictures of it, Tim, when it comes in. So I mean, this is a great hobby it's a great way and guys everybody in the knife community whether you're on ig facebook youtube and you've got your own channels or you're just one of the guys that every now and then writes into us or just watches we appreciate each and every one of you and nice slice uh if you're just joining us you said no case folders we actually did have two case folders um we had the uh rust lock and we had the abalone so mm -hmm. we had two case folders um, be sure to go back and check that out because these are going to be these videos are going to be posted to our um, Facebook and to our YouTube and to our Instagram as well. All right. So, final questions, final thoughts, final answers. Anybody? Um, Anything? Elvin, greetings. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It only briefly starts out as not a high end hobby. Yes, you are absolutely right, Lacey Lace. No, 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 I have stayed um, on my end of things. I have, I have. No, 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 no. no, no, no. The other day, you were just, you were just like, "Dang it, you're actually, you're rubbing off on me well, now." You're I picked up a hundred dollar knife. Oh, that's not bad for that price. Wait a minute. It, I had that blinding realization. <laughs> no. 
Okay. Now, I'm I'm still now. What do you got in your pocket? So we'll do that. That's what we'll finish it up with because we're not getting tons of questions. We're getting lots of thanks. Thanks, guys. I, 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 oh, oh, I missed that with nice slice. No case. Okay, yeah. they didn't have any case folders in Paris. Really? That's, that's sad. That's sad. They had the Winkler fixed blades, but mm. no case folders. Gotcha. Well, European laws are always so different on knives as well, and we have. That's one of the reasons we only ship yeah. in uh, the U.S. is there are so many things out there. So. Any chance more of the poison dart frog vitronox? I do not know, Tim, but I will I will get with some people and see what we can do with those and get an answer on that one way forward or run, uh, one way or another. Let's see. Yeah, but I mean, okay. So what are you actually carrying today? Today, I've got I've got a couple. Hang you on. always have a couple. Um, so I've usually what I try to do I try to do one traditional, mm -hmm. one modern, mm -hmm. and one fixed blade. Understandable. So my traditional folder is uh, one of my favorite. Um, Your back popping, or what was that? That was kind of impressive. That was somewhere behind us. Okay, I, I thought that was you. That was not me. Um, is going to be my Triple uh, R, O one four, clasper right there. Mm -hmm. um, that's still one of my favorite Rough Rider reserves that has come out yet. Very eye catching. And uh, I carry it on a regular basis. Uh, that's that's one of my favorites. Love the action on it. It's uh and and it's a perfect size as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really dig that one. Um, triple R, O one four. Uh, for my modern folder, I've got my Pena Swayback. The Swayback. Um, we and got, we got to run around the store in the shark costume again the other day. That brought yep. back some wonderful memories. We sure did. Um, so and this Pena Swayback has been modified slightly. Mm -hmm. Um, when Bladed Ginger still worked with us, I want to show that one up close because he did a great job. Um polished the titanium and did an entropic finish mm -hmm. on the liners and on the bolsters right there as well as the pocket clip um so did an entropic finish on that m390 on the blade steel and uh that one's super fidgety with that front flipper i really dig it this was my first foray into front mm -hmm. flippers when it came out i remember uh, you sitting around trying to figure out how it yeah. worked for a good hour or two but and once you uh, got it yeah. Tim, we agree that Copperhead is a great size. Yes, that is the next one going in my collection. I actually have it on my desk right now ready to pay for it. Anita, we do not have the information on when or if the next case event will be at this time, but we'll take a look at it. Feel free to reach out to us on IG or send us an email, and we'll see about getting some information on that. And then for my fixed blade, and this has been my beater fixed blade lately, is uh, my Weather Weatherford Heritage Series, um, and I really dig this thing. Um, it, it always goes against everything that I think whenever you tell me that your beater knife is your handmade knife, but I know that's what he makes them for. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, this is the closest thing you're going to get to a custom knife one-off. Mm -hmm. um, he does make them um, kind of production style, but he all, he makes all of his knives by hand. He does, you know, the same patterns mm -hmm. over and over again, but he makes them all by hand. So there's going to be little nuances, little differences. Um and this has been one of my favorites. I made the uh, noose lanyard uh, out of a piece of leather, and it's breaking in really nice. It's not nearly as stiff as it was, um, but this has been one of my favorites, and this is the perfect size as far as EDC fixed blades goes mm -hmm. and as far as I'm concerned. And also for the price, to get a handmade knife for 130 bucks, And that you didn't have to wait for. Yeah. He went downstairs, he took a look at each of them, put them in his hand, felt which one was right for him, and picked it out that way. So anytime yeah. that you're near East Tennessee, stop off, exit 407. What are we, a mile off the exit? mile and a half off the exit? A little bit more, a little bit, like two or three miles. Right, we'll but say yeah. th three miles off the exit. Big blue roof. Big, big blue, blue roof. Big, 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 big blue roof. Um, so those are my ISD, three knives we'll that I've got on We'll see you next time around. For me, I always carry my the knife when somebody says, hey, do you have a knife? I always keep my little cheapie around. Uh, one Big red EDC. Got mine in yellow here. But this is an MKM uh, Enox uh, plastic handle. Yeah, four ninety nine. Anytime we get these in. They That's a great beater right there. They fly out the door every single time. They really yeah. do. And bright color. I'm not going to misplace it. I freaking love that thing. Then I've got my marbles. And it's in VG10. And that's the MR600. I've been using that one every day since it, I have three months, four months, and the patina on that thing is yeah. really starting to come in. Really like that. And I think Gabe Customs picked up two or three of those. 
And TC put the I like that lanyard. Yeah, I was about to say I like that lanyard there. I had I had a TC put a lanyard on there, so I really like it. And then with National Knife Day coming up, nice custom lanyard. That is a custom TC. (laughs) Um, And then with National Knife Day coming up, I've got my Kismic from Kaiser, and this is one that you and Isaac gave me last National Knife Day. N six ninety on the blade steel. Yep, and I have used that thing for an entire year, every single day. So I mean that right there has been my office driver. That's been everything. I cooked hot dogs at church the other night with that. <laughs> you when turn they, them. With yeah, what they they look at you. They don't give you. They, they they give you a big bottle of propane. They say we need four hundred hot dogs cooked, and then you have a knife. That's all you got. Yep. It works. Yep. But. Absolutely. So um, thank you guys. Be sure. And I'm going to say this again. Join us for National Knife Day. We're going to be live most of the day. Um, doing giveaways. We've got a ton of giveaways coming up for that day. Ooh, also, point. if you're close by, if you're anywhere within, you know, a couple of hours of here, stop by on the 20th. Um, see the guys with Catching Deers, Rut Daniels doing a meet and greet there. It's going to be a huge event that day from four to seven. And uh, that's going to be a big, big deal. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, we've also got our uh, vendor days coming up uh, mm-hmm. in October. Um, the weekend of the 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Then we got to go back down um, to Georgia. Then we're going everybody. to Georgia um, for uh, their uh, gathering. Um, we have got Georgia some Bushcraft Gathering. Just a little tease. We've got some new stuff from Dave Canterbury coming out. We can't even tell the name yes, of it yet. Yes, we do. And hang on just one second. Hang on. Oh, hang on. What's, what's he doing? All right, while he's doing that, let's take a look. Let's see. What would you say the be- best Bucks fixed blades are? I love the 119 and the 120. They're very classic, but there are so many buck fixed blades. It really depends on what you're using it for. Are you using it in hunting? Are you using it in skinning? Are you using it for an EDC? Um, Quentin, thank you for saying uh, SMKW is like heaven on there. We appreciate that. If anybody hasn't seen it, we did do a store tour video of TC running at top speed. It was like 38 minutes for him to get through all 108,000 square feet of the store. And we've added more since he's done that. I think we need to do that again, but he'd be all out of breath. Yeah. So this is my EDC bum bag from uh, Blue Ridge Overland Gear. Um, triple run thank bum you, bag. Rick. And uh, thank Rick Stowe for that. Um, he's awesome. Absolutely incredible. I need to ask, what day and is National Knife Day? The 24th of August every year. 24th. And that is national. That's not yes. SMKW. We celebrate it year-round yes. and hold it in our hearts. But National Knife Day is the 24th. So on my bum bag... I keep my keys on my monkey board right there. I've got my key bar, and I've got my um, Olight Baton 3 Eternal right there. I've also got my O-Pen. I've got my um, my Huntsman inside. I've got my um, EDC Ruger LCP2. I've got my wallet. I've got my best damn EDC. Oh, what is this? What is that? Oh, yeah, we can't show that. That doesn't exist yet. <laughs> You're so basic. <laughs> oh, I'm like a pumpkin spice latte. Um, so we've also, like Greg said, we've got some uh, a new tool coming out um, that is going to be our brand, designed, created by Dave Canterbury. Um, it's an outdoor tool, and it's really, really super cool, and we are so stoked about it. That's going to be coming out very, very soon. So stay tuned for all of that. we got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Also, let us know what you want to see in that new EDC series. Um, and let us know what you guys are looking forward to in the comments down below. Uh, we want to thank you guys so much for being here with us. We appreciate it more than you know. Um, you guys are the reason why we do this, and you guys are what keeps us going. And uh, we really Without do you all, that. I would have to do real work, and I am against that. So thank and you for being here. Without you all, I would have to put up with him alone. So, but he has a point. Like, I'm, he's not wrong. Mm-hmm. I know this. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's going to be uh, wrapping it up for us. Do you guys have any other questions, comments, concerns? What uh, Thrifty says. What is my favorite Civivi? What What's your favorite Civivi? Um. Well, you go. He asked you first. Yeah, well, so. what is it, is it Civivi that is the Appalachian Drifter? No, is that Weave? They run together for me. It's really tough for me. Um, as far as Civivi goes, I, I'd have to say the um, Elementum. I I the like any Elementum that came out with this year. Yeah, that one was pretty cool. Um, I like the Baby Banter. 
I like the new the oh, new ben, Civivi yes. Thug. Ooh, the mini Thug. I'm the, I'm waiting the, for it to the come. The new in. Civivi Thug. Um, which is the, uh, it's, you know, the lower end materials mm -hmm. than the Wee Thug. Um, really dig that one. Lacey Lace says the Paraxis. The Paraxis is a good one. Also, um, I just had it in my head. There's lots of room there. Oh, the Crit. The Crit is my favorite. Gotcha. By far, my favorite. It's Fire a, Kenny, the 24th. National Knife Day, 24th. The Crit is a multi tool. Two front flippers, wire pocket clip. Oh, that, okay. um, yeah, that's the one that's the flip for on each one. Yeah, and it's a liner lock. Mm -hmm. It's got a blade for one, and then the other one is a multi-tool with a like a seat belt cutter. I use it. Um, I like it on the farm, and uh, that's what my wife and I just bought is uh, a, a farm with a uh, horse barn and everything. I use the multi-tool and the seat belt cutter part for cutting um, baling twine on Bowling square IG, bales. If you go to smkw.com and type in Benchmade Scales, you'll see all the ones that we have in stock. Yes. Yes. A lot of people are looking for those right now. I can't imagine why. <laughs> when are all the new Triple R's going to come out? As soon as they get here. The day they get here, yeah, they're we pre-built. Put them out. We put them out then. So like the tater skins we did the video on the other day, we are not hiding them. TC's not eating them. Well, I'm not eating them all because I'm always the one ordering lunch. But as soon as they get here, we'll put them out with every single one of the ones, whether the stone works, whether the, the tater skins, or maybe that triple R020 that uh, Brian was talking about earlier. Yeah, the Ooh. 020. Yeah. Yes. That one, uh, we've got the sample on Brian's desk downstairs. Um, we're just waiting on the stock to come in to announce that one. Mm -hmm. Guys, as always, we had fun. It's been a good day. Yes. I've this avoided doing real day. work. This has, been a, this has been a great live, thanks to you guys, and we appreciate that. i got to go edit videos now. Yep. We've got, uh, we've got some real work to do now. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you guys for joining us. Again, like I said, in the comments, let us know what you want to see from that EDC series and what you want to hear us talk about. I'm going to also be doing one on EDC multi-tools and uh, top five EDC multi-tools because we did one when I first started here. Um, but I kind of want to update that and uh, go a little bit more in-depth um, on philosophy of use um, uh, because I think POU really uh, makes a huge difference when it comes to what kind of multi-tool uh, you're wanting to use. So, folks, thank you so much again. You guys are awesome. And uh, remember, if, if it cuts, no. <laughs> I, 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 we carry it. I'm scared.